If you like my dad's videos, please subscribe to QA Insights channel. Welcome to Learn K6 series. In this episode 5, we are going to see about checks in K6. If you want to validate your response, then you can leverage checks in K6. In other languages or other tools, you could have come across the terms like checkpoints or assertions. So basically it will validate something. It will evaluate some condition and then it will give you the value whether it is true or false. Checks do not stop the execution. It keeps storing the result and compares the actual with the expected. If you want to use checks, you have to first import using the import statement. So it is a built-in uh, module. Then you can leverage the check function and then you can add your expression. So in this example, we are validating the status whether the request is throwing 200 or not. Now let us see a quick demo how you can use checks in K6 with various examples. This is the simple uh, K6 script which has the check and sleep. So here first step is you have to import the check module using the import statement. So in line number 2 we are importing the check and sleep from K6. And in line number six, we are sending a simple get request to recres.in and then we are getting the page information of two. In line number six, we have the check function with uh, multiple checkpoints. So first we will see one by one. So line number nine has the uh, status check. So using the uh, r.status, we are validating whether the response is throwing the status code 200 or not. So now let me execute uh, this script. So I'm going to bring up the uh, terminal. So before we uh, run the script, first let us validate the uh, K6 version. So we are using uh, 0.36, which is the latest version as of uh, today's recording. So now uh, let me quickly uh, clear my screen and let us uh, run the uh, checks demo.js. So by default, as you know, it will execute for one iteration on one VU with the maximum duration of 10 minute 30 seconds, including the uh, graceful stop. And here, if you just scroll up a little bit, there will be a checkpoint will be added. So if the checkpoint is giving a true value, basically it is pass, then you can see something in green color here. Suppose in line number nine, I'm going to validate whether this particular status code is 201 or not. So in this case, this particular uh, execution should fail. Now let us uh, execute this. And if you just scroll up and see, the status is failing because we are expecting 201, but the actual is 200. So it is failing. So like this, you can keep adding multiple checkpoints so that you can validate multiple uh, stuffs. So in the second checkpoint, we are validating not status. So we are uh, checking something uh, not 404, but uh, this is kind of a bad implementation. But for the demo sake, I just uh, added the condition. And line number 11, we are parsing the output from the json.parse r dot body and then I'm just validating whether the length is greater than a zero or not. So basically it will check for the some uh, length of the uh, in the data response. And line number 12, I'm validating the body size, the actual uh, size, the response size, whether it is less than 1030 uh, bytes. And line number 13, so we are validating the, uh, the response text itself, the actual uh, uh, value whether it contains or not. So in this case, we are leveraging the r.body.includes. So includes, it will check for the text ID is present or not. So before that, let me show you quickly uh, using the uh, Thunder client uh, here in Visual uh, Studio. So let me open this. And so this is the uh, get call uh, we are sending. And if I hit send, you can see the status is 200, size is uh, 1.01 KB. And this is the response. So here we are seeing uh, it is giving the valid response. Basically the length of this particular JSON is uh, greater than one. And it has the text ID 
in uh, every uh, item so our k6 script will validate these stuffs using these checks so let me just uncomment this and now i am going to clear my screen and then i am going to execute this so now ideally all the checks should be passed and then everything should show in green color so like this you can keep adding your checks and you can validate so this doesn't stop your execution so if something is failing your script execution will continue so that is the uh, main feature of checks so now as you know 201 so the first check will fail but still k6 will proceed with the execution and then it will display the results but if you want to stop your execution based on certain condition then we have to leverage thresholds so in next video we are going to see what is threshold and how you can leverage thresholds and we are going to see the difference between checks and thresholds in k6 thanks for watching have a good day if you like my dad's videos please subscribe to qa insights channel